Welcome to another podcast. We have amazing friends and pastors Alan and Steph Kelsey all the way from Gateway Church, Dallas, Texas. Indeed. It's good to have you guys with us. And uh, as I mentioned, this obviously you've become family to us. And of course, the people that are listening, most will know who you are. Some won't. Uh, so maybe just a quick introduction. Uh, how'd you guys meet? Where'd this all land up? And, uh, and then we'll jump into some strengths-based yeah. marriage. Sounds great. Well, we feel like family too. We love being here and being with you guys. So it's a blessing to us. Yeah. So thanks for having us. So where are you from? How do we meet? I'm from Nebraska, right in the middle of the US. So uh, we met through FCA, Fellowship of Christian Athlete at the University of Nebraska. I was playing softball and Alan w came on a swimming scholarship there. And it was love at first sight with my car. <laughs> okay, this is where I got to get in. This is where I got to get in right here. Yeah, no, so I was born and raised here, lived in Westville, uh, moved there because I got the swimming scholarship, obviously. I've now spent more time in the U.S. than I did growing up in South Africa and met her three days after I got there. And uh, I had gone to an FCA meeting and they had announced that Stephen Curtis Chapman was playing on Tuesday oh, wow. and anybody wants to go meet in this parking lot. So I show up at the parking lot. And there's this black 63 Chevrolet Impala with red leather interior, two-door hardtop. I'm like, I don't care whose car that is. I'm rolling I had it going car. on. Which for people who don't know about cars, just need to know this is like one classic. of the... Yeah, oh, it's a classic. classic. Oh, yeah. yeah, you want that car, man. And so she was driving it. And I, when I looked at her and the car, I'm like, oh, this could be a really good day. <laughs> <laughs> Normally it's the other way around. Normally it's the girl who sees the guy's exactly. car. Exactly. But I get this now. Yeah, no, God knew he what he was doing. He was on a bike. Oh, okay, I got you. As in bicycle? As in he pedaled his way there? What's wrong with you? So then you guys obviously started seeing each other and got married. How many years after that? A year yeah, we, and a half? No, it was more than Two? that. Yeah. Two max. Two years, yeah. And then we, we got married and we, we left. We came back to South Africa, watched Nelson Mandela come into power, yes. knew everything was going to be all right, and then, and then moved back to kind of live with Steph. Yeah, we just came to check on the country and then we yeah. left. Yeah. Well, you did a good job. <laughs> right. We're doing great since then. Um, I, know, I know you then went back. I and uh, And Ellen, I know you got really involved in the Gallup Foundation and mm. gearing up as a strengths coach, yeah. etc. Obviously, the whole marriage books are on that. Mm -hmm. right. And even the evening on Thursday, which I can't wait to get into some detail of. Mm -hmm. um, but just a little bit of Gallup, just a little bit of yeah. what their intention is. What's the goal of Gallup's story? Yeah, so not to be too heavy handed on God's behalf, but really believe that I really believe that he took me to Nebraska in particular because I did get a scholarship opportunity to go to UCLA and I turned that one down. But to Nebraska in particular, one, because Stephanie was waiting for me, but two, because I, could, I got into a small group of guys who worked for Gallup and I got early access to the strengths assessment. And so I was one of the first folks to get it. And so I've had exposure to it for quite some time, got fully trained as a certified coach and have been coaching people for a long time with it now and have uh, really f come to value it as a tool. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I love it. Our team's done it, you've done it with our team. Mm -hmm. um, and I love the fact that there's this idea that there are a certain number of strengths that keep showing up in people, yeah. right? And uh, that if we just understand the, the kind of core of the ones that stand out for us, if we just live by those strengths, right? Absolutely. Uh, rather than trying to kind of build on our weaknesses all the time. It's, right. it's really building our strength. Right? Yeah, so all of uh, psychology has focused on trying to fix what's broken about people. And it wasn't really until the 50s that psychologists began to believe, okay, what, what might happen if we focused on what was great about people? And those two guys were Don and Dan Clifton. They are the fathers of positive psychology. And they created that survey to help find what is great about people. They called it the Strengths Finder Assessment. Everybody has 34, but they all occur in a different sequence and if you find out what you're great at and you apply yourself to it the upside on it is just exponentially great yeah i love that i mean we've done it as a team and obviously as a team it's a big deal trying to figure out who fits in where who's strong at what and when you settle that thing when you just realize this is kind of who i am this is this is how god made me uh, it really does bring something to life now we put that in marriage and you've got this other team dynamic you got yeah. you got a guy and a girl you got in some ways polar opposites right mm -hmm. and i love that you took the the quality of the strength server and put it into a book on marriage because for me uh, marriage is the most precious relationship on earth yeah. uh, it kind of feels when it's winning everything else seems okay 
And at the same time, when, when it's struggling, it kind of feels like it doesn't matter what else is good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's, it's not as good as it could be. Yeah. Um, so I want to jump straight into the book, if you can. Good. And uh, I love this opening page when you said, we dedicate this book to every couple who has suffered relationally from avoidable pain. That's powerful. Caused by a lack of knowledge of each other. Our prayer is that you would find deeper understanding and peace and fall in deeper love through revelation in this book. I love that. Uh, I would love to know what's the essence of this book. Okay, we've got strengths as a background, uh, but how does it land in marriage? Do you want to answer? Well, I think as, as Alan started really delving into strengths, uh, most people were using it like in churches, in teams, in corporate world. And what we were finding is having that having the the knowledge of what our strengths were and words to put around it That's good. it was helping our marriage tremendously because we had pain points in our marriage where i think we we easily fall into assumptions that you are doing this on purpose to irritate me <laughs> <laughs> okay let's let's go into this a little bit this is good this is jumping ahead but this is good uh, give us an example of a strength of his and a strength of yours and how those may have in this moment yeah. clashed. So I, my strengths are very relational. And in that relation, like I love to process out loud. I love to have long, deep, meaningful conversations. He is in his head. He loves to like process internally. And he's always thinking and he's always like solving the world's problems. Yes, he is. <laughs> and which is amazing about him, right? Yeah. But in the context of a marriage, I can feel forgotten or I can feel like he's not wanting to be here present with me. And the things that I want to talk about, like heart issues, that's not what he's thinking about. He's like saving the world, you know? So I think for me, it could feel easily like, um, like I wasn't being seen. And um, it can feel personal when you don't realize like God has wired him on, in a way that even the thought that he writes books, like I don't think of writing books to help the world around me. That's just not how Yet. I think. Mm. So how he thinks, I can now see it in a way that it's such a blessing and I can understand that it's not personal against me. But I can also say to him, I need this from you, and I know this isn't the natural flow for you, but if you'll come into the space for a moment because this is what I need, then that's I'll amazing. be good, and then you can go run some more with all the things you're thinking about. So that's amazing. So I love the fact that it was out of personal pain mm -hmm. and uh, an experience that you, this book was birthed. Yeah. Those are always the biggest blessings, right? Yeah, for me, I feel like uh, you know, a lot of my strengths have to do with getting things done. And so it has a very practical, that brings a very practical side to things. Mm -hmm. So having the strengths tool was useful for me, but then it became apparent like, wait, this could practically solve some very big challenges between us if we could just use it like it was intended. And so really, I wrote the words, but she helped me find all the wisdom in, in the marriage. So it was good. Oh, that's awesome. So Steph, um, we're just chatting just now, you mentioned things that really stood out for me. You spoke about how um, there's two kind of tensions in this in this world of strengths-based marriage. There's the projecting of your strengths, like overemphasizing yours on somebody else. Yeah. Uh, and then there's the minimizing. Why don't you talk about those tensions just a little? What do you mean by that? Yeah, like in the, in the space of projecting, we maybe it's kind of a dominant strength of yours and you tend to feel like the whole world should be looking through that lens and so Alan likes to teach it in a way of it, it's like a lens your strengths are like a lens so I'm seeing life very relational everywhere that I go and when I look through that lens it can be as simple as includer is one of my strengths and so if I'm standing in a circle of people and someone walks up to the side, I will widen my stance to include that person. If that person walks up to the circle on the other side where I can't widen it, I may, I may project on those people like how rude. Okay. Where they're not even thinking, they don't have includer mm. and they're not thinking the way that I think. And so instead of projecting onto them that they should behave like I do because that makes sense to me, I can understand not everybody thinks that way. 
So I could still use my includer for the greater good in saying, hey, come over here and making space for them. But I don't have to project it in a way that I'm judging that other person. Yeah, that's great. Because I suppose in most of things in life, you put it into good language. And this book does it as well. Yeah. yeah. But we're expecting others to behave like us. Yes. We like it when people are like us. Yes. Uh, so I love the fact that this dr drills down and like we're uniquely designed by God. And if we get that in marriage, mm -hmm. oh, it's going to change everything. Yeah. So how about your perspective on that? Yeah, I just think that we, we do that to each other. I mean, as a husband and a wife, you project your strengths onto the other person. So you expect of them that they're going to behave in a way that makes the most sense to you. And then when they don't, you either file that in a box that goes, oh, but I know who you are and I'm leaving room for you to be you. Or you file it in a box that goes, you're doing this just to make me crazy. <laughs> Like or you're why, broken. Yeah, or why don't you behave like a normal person like I yeah, am? Yeah, sure. In fact, those words would come out often, right? Yeah. A normal, yes. what even is that? Right. Yeah. Like, normal people do this. I don't understand what's wrong with you. Like, it can easily get there. And it's just a very simple misunderstanding. Or this is common sense. You yeah. just think yeah. this is common sense. Well, well it is to you because that's the lens through which you look. Sure, you. sure. Yeah. I get it. So Tess and I, we're different like this as well. And it's amazing. I, um, I like to work through things loudly mm. and, and verbalize it and communicate it. She's more in her head. Uh -huh. And uh, it's amazing because when there's conflict, I'll often go to her and be like, I want to talk about it. And she'll go, before you say anything, <laughs> think about what you're about to say. <laughs> you know, and at that point, I either run it hard or um, <laughs> totally engage. So I want to um, talk about the flip side of projecting my strengths on someone is minimizing my mm -hmm. strengths so it's actually it's not now forcing myself on someone now it's actually hiding yes. in what i'm uniquely born for right yeah uh, do, you want to, do you want to speak to that a bit yeah i think there's two reasons why we do that either one you were raised in a way that you were told too much of that is no good put hide it put it away and so you you learn to to shelter your power and the other is you just don't know actually you're completely a, a, like you have no idea that you have essentially superpowers and so you don't ever do anything about it. And so it routinely goes underused. And the dark side of it is there's a, there's a version of this where, as believers, we are saying to the created concerning what he has made that it's, it's not worth enough to, to put out there, right? And I don't know we get to say that, you know? Yeah. He's, we're made in his image. You're out on some thin ice, I think, if you're accusing him of making inferior or mediocre products, you know. Yeah, I love that. So, in the, so again, in the context of relationships now, uh, on the one hand, you're not wanting to force yourself on someone, but on the other hand, you're going like, but I need to be me. Yeah. yeah. And I need permission to be me in this room. So uh, could you, Steph, maybe talk to her a little bit, maybe even in the context of how you guys figure stuff out. How, do you, how did you find a confidence to be you without projecting it on him, right? Yeah. Well, I have done that wrong. A lot as well I think even in my relationship with God um, projecting on him how I hear from God and because I am relational very relational my relationship with God looks really different than what his does so um, even in in the context of uh, and so that might be a minimizing thing you know that I that he felt from me um, I had to repent of that and ask him to forgive me that it's okay for him to hear from God a completely different wow, way than how I hear from God. And in my life personally, I feel like he has, you, he right here, <laughs> Alan, <laughs> has been a huge um, blessing for me to come out of the shadows more That's because amazing. my strengths, because they are so relational without the verbiage that strengths brings, I didn't even know how to say what I was good at. Mm. Wow. I didn't have a clue because I'm not super heady, I'm not the intellectual, I'm not input, and the world highly values those things. So if you're gonna have a resume and you're high in, I have a PhD and, you know, because I'm heady and I love to learn all these things, then those things are celebrated because I'm, I love relationships, and I read books on relationships, and I like watching shows about relationships. Oh like <laughs> like, the all... like The Bachelor, or not those kind of shows? <laughs> well, I don't love that one, but, but yeah, things like that. Okay, just watching sure. people figure it Reality out. Reality so. things, I love watching human interaction, like the ID channel, which is like yeah, murder sure. mysteries, I love that kind of thing. Oh, wow. So, uh, Survivor. 
I like watching Survivor, so I know it's weird and random, but I feel like I'm always learning from those human interactions. Yeah, I love it. And so um, when we talked and got to a place where I needed to start working again, because I'd been at home with our kids for so long, I literally was like, I'm going to be a greeter at Walmart. I have nothing to offer <laughs> the world. I, I just didn't know where my gift set fit in. So I was hugely minimizing mm. the contribution that I had to make. And um, anyhow, God thankfully had another plan and he made a way for my gifts. Yeah. But so I think knowing your strengths solves two problems. It always solves two a, problems. Two. Yeah, it's exactly. Two. It's always two. <laughs> it's always two. You're getting it's it. You're two. getting it. <laughs> it's a tomorrow problem and a today problem. The, sol the problem it solves for tomorrow is it gives you the language to become the best version of who you could be. I mean, in partnership with God, but you're never going to get to your fullest contribution outside of your strengths. So if, if you're going to do that, if that's in your heart to do, you got to know who you are. That's the tomorrow yeah. piece. But it also solves a today problem, which is, is there, is there any joy available for me today in deploying who God made me to be? And there is, because He's made it so that there's actually a chemical endorphin rush every time you use them. Oh, wow. So you get this payoff every time you are functioning in the design that God made for you to, to, to operate in. And so I, I think, you know, it's not enough that we're made in His image and we have power that He has. But then when we use it, He gives us a payoff as well, not to mention that it takes us on a road toward the strongest contribution of our lives. It's just this very powerfully circling, mm -hmm. getting better kind of idea. Uh, yeah, so even that. you asked me about my sleep last night, <clears throat> and I said I didn't get to sleep till midnight. Well, we had dinner with you guys. So I was, no, are you I didn't him think now? about that. Your relational that. tank was full. Yes. We're, oh, that's awesome. Mine was as well. Yeah. So she was running. She was buzzing. She was like, oh, this is so fantastic. It fed her on such a high level. It took her a long time to come off of that okay. to be able to go to sleep. I got you. So one thing I want to honor you guys with is that I've watched some of what you've worked through in your marriage. I haven't known all the details, mm -hmm. but I've watched the outside and I've enjoyed the company of you in the process because... I kind of feel like you're paying attention to something that most people don't. Yeah. They just hope it figures out. You know, yeah. always with young couples, I always say a great marriage is there for the taking. Just don't expect it to land on your lap, you know. Oh, um, and, I, and I love the fact that you guys have intentionally built toward a great marriage and not just left it with yourselves. You've given us a book that, that can help us. Um, but I want to honor you because I see life in your marriage now more today than I did the first day we met. That's a good sign. Yeah. And uh, I'm just grateful for that. Yeah. Um, you mentioned something, Ellen, about uh, Acts 3, when Peter rocks up at the gate beautiful. Yeah. And it's kind of putting a bit of God's language to this idea of giving what we have, being yeah. unique in who we are. Uh, I love that. Speak about that a little bit. Yeah, so, uh, you know, Peter's cruising around. He's minding his own business. He gets to the gate to get in. And there's a beggar right there. And the beggar says, hey, have you got any money for me? i got to have something. And Peter turns to him and says these really powerful words. He basically says, I cannot give you what I do not have. And in that particular case, it had to do with money. But it's a functionally true statement because I can't give you what I don't have. Meaning if God has not wired me with a particular strength, I can't function in that out of that particular strength. So, for example, this podcast is going to be sworn to secrecy, just so you know. But um, like number 34 out of 34 potential strengths in my life is empathy. I pretty much stink at it. But Steph has it almost super high in hers. It's in her top five. Mm -hmm. So if you interact with us, let's say you had the same, the exact same interaction with both of us, and you got my best effort, because I couldn't come to you out of an existing talent. I could only come to you out of a learned skill. Sure. That's different than a pre-existing talent, right? Talent you can only find. Skill you can decide and, and develop for yourself. So pause on that. Just elaborate on that. This is power because the strengths <clears throat> looks at talent, right? Exactly. Who exactly. It's, a, it's, not, it's not designed to help. You. It's, it's designed to help find what God has innately put in you. So if I have a talent to do something, that's God-given. And my only responsibility is to find it and then do something with it. But if I wanted to add a skill, I could add skateboarding, I could add accountancy, I could add whatever I want. That's my choice. I go out and add the skill and then I use it. Whether I'm going to be any good at it is not sure. the point, like yeah. it's my choice, right? So if, if you're going to get empathy from me, i got to go to skill to be able to deliver something to you. If you're going to get empathy from her, this is a natural ability that she has that has talent. And if she does anything to improve it, it rockets into huge delivery capacity. 
So if you had the same interaction with me as you did with her and then came away and judged which one of those two is more authentic or believable, you would say Stephanie's for sure because she can give you what she genuinely has. I can't. I don't have it. That's brilliant. I love it because um, in my life, uh, futuristic activator positivity is kind of kind of up there in mine, mm. and uh, and I always felt like that was dreamland. You know, stay away from dreamland, uh, get down to the ground type thing. And yet, part of this conversation with you over the years has encouraged me to remain in a position yeah. of in, of vision. You know, yeah. see what's before us and dream of the future. Right. And, and it's been amazing, but what, what I haven't done well, I don't think, and I'm learning to now, is take that into marriage. What's 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 for our family? Yeah. Imagine what the future could hold. So I'm, so I'm doing that not just in my workspace, but in the most precious part of my life, yeah. best relational part of my life, yeah. which is my marriage. Yeah. And uh, I think that's where the when that kicker comes, mm -hmm. it changes everything. It's like who you're born to be is not just to help you get a bigger paycheck. Yeah. It will, yeah. but it's to maximize this idea of marriage, mm -hmm. just life in marriage. And so set yourself free. Be that in marriage. You know? Well, I think exactly what you're saying is where we hurt our marriages so easily is that we take the best of us into the workplace so and true. we forget to bring the best of us home. Mm -hmm. And so when we're first married, we're giddy and excited and all the possibilities are there. And then we start living a life where we're giving the best of ourselves to everyone else but our spouse. So true. Yeah. And so I do think that strengths is a place where you can start learning how to bring the best of you at home. And again, you often marry opposites. Yeah. Even if you have similar strengths, you probably still see life in different. a very different way through those strengths. Yeah. And so when you're coming home and that's the hard place to be because at work people are giving you the accolades because you have a job based on what your strengths are usually. And then you just find that impasse at home. But if you can find a way to bring your strengths home and learn how to share your strengths in a way that you make each other better instead of pick each other apart, yeah, sure. then wow. So Magic. I, I want to I draw on that because one of the big things you talk about in the book is communication. Yeah. So one thing is to acknowledge that we're wired differently. We yeah. have God-given gifts that make us who we are, uniquely who we are. And uh, if we could celebrate that in the marriage, it would create a better marriage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I like how you hone in and say, all right, language is important here. Mm -hmm. Like to know what the strength is and not say anything is to kind of give someone a gift and never unwrap it, right? Right. Um, so I love the statement you make. You said, by including language that relates to your spouse's strengths, like pause, yeah. know what they are and right. include language, you will deepen the accuracy of your communication and capture each other's attention far more quickly. Yeah. Isn't it true that in marriage, what we're often looking for is attention. As a guy, I just want to know I'm counting for something. Yeah. And as a woman, she wants to know she's seen. Yeah. So uh, talk to us about language. Help anyone listening to this now. Maybe we'll kind of bring this to a close soon. Um, how important is language and how can we create that in the home? Yeah. How do we? Well, let me jump in on that. I feel like, you know, if I just, I can really only speak to the guy's world because I is one. And uh, I mean, how many guys have said, man, I just don't understand her. Like, <laughs> I don't understand her. Well, okay, bro, I'm giving you like a hacker's tip here. Like, yes. you can get in and figure this out on the shortcut. Like, if you'll find out what her strengths are and just read the short paragraph that describes what that is, you just jumped three years in your relationship in what you know about not just what she loves, but how she's wired, like what really drives her, what's really interesting to her, what really motivates her. And if you'll just do just a little bit with using that, uh, it will shift the quality of your relationship instantly. So good. Yeah, so there's no, no more reason to have to say, man, I don't understand her. Like this, this material really will help you understand what drives her. So for example, Part of what's, what attracted Stephanie to me is, be, or to me, yeah, because she's so very relational, and I'm not. And so opposites do attract at first. Yeah. <laughs> but if you live with that oppositeness long enough, that stuff can drive you crazy, right? Eventually you're like, you're doing this to drive me nuts on purpose. Cut it out. Or you look at that and go, no, God designed compatible opposites to be drawn to each other because... In the book, we did a bunch of research. There's a, there's a book that got written by um, Hendricks and Hunt called Getting the Love You Want. And in it, it describes how essentially, left to your own devices, you are probably going to choose the person who is most likely to heal you. Oh, wow. And what that means is they have the things that you don't have. And that's going to have to be opposite. 
And so when the two of you come together, you, re you really do represent a whole. And that's God's intention from Genesis 3. Like, no, this needs to be one unit and they need, to, they need to look like we do. They need to have our unity. So the oppositeness is not just a byproduct of some weird cosmic whatever. <laughs> this is God's design awesome. to that. bring wholeness to the earth as an example of their trinity and their unity. That is awesome. And I think also, like you said before, when it comes to uh, weakness, we're so forensic in, our, mm. in what's wrong. You go to a restaurant, there's a little part of the meal that you right. didn't like, you, you know exactly what it is that you right. didn't like. But when it comes to what we love about each other, we're not forensic, we're general. We're just like, hey, I love you. Oh, that's good. What yeah. about me? You know? yeah. Yeah. Um, so in the marriage, um, Steph, you alluded to in the beginning when you started to see who Ellen was. How have you built a language to celebrate that? Like, can you give us an example of being forensic in that for us? Yeah, I think, um, I think for me, I get to watch him and see and know him to a place where I can see when he's in his head. I can see when there's ideas turning. Sometimes I'll even say to him, are you solving the world's problems right now? <laughs> she That's did this good. to me on the airplane on the way over here. I was reading um, Inc. Magazine and I was learning something and so I get my, my phone out and I'm starting to make notes about notes. something. Yeah, because I'm, I need to remember to do this in another space. Yeah. And she looks at me and goes, are you solving the world's problems? I'm like, uh-huh. Yeah. And I just awesome. felt... So even but that I felt little really, understanding, you Yeah, know? and I felt really seen in that moment. Like, yeah. I'm like, you get me, girl. I appreciate that. Yeah. That's cool. So it's commenting almost in a natural way yeah. on, on what seems to be a, a God-given right. gift. But it's her being able to recognize that I do it and calling it good. Okay. That's and those two things. really what you said earlier, all people, want to, they want to be seen. We want to be seen. And so when you know your spouse sees you, that ministers to you. Yeah, but I could see heart. you and see what you're doing and go, okay, that girl's crazy. That stuff is crazy. I don't, why does she do that? It, I don't have a box for that. But so it's not just to be seen, but it's to be seen and to be told, that's good. I yeah, need sure. that. Give yeah. us more of that. Like yeah. that matters. So Tess is uh, one of her high strengths is strategy. And so when it comes to family planning, she's like next level. Mm -hmm. Like she knows exactly how to get things organized for us to have the best December when we're in January. And uh, I often like, just out of reading this book, literally, I just, every time I see her with a calendar out, I'm like, I'm so grateful, baby, uh, for the way you create I, space yeah. for our family yeah. in the calendar. Yeah. And a good friend of mine actually recently asked me, what's the best thing that ever happened in your marriage? I'm like, I gave her the keys to our calendar. Yes. He thought it was crazy. It's like, the guy has to run the mm. key. I'm like, not if strategically she's stronger, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I love this. I love that we just got to, we got to see it. We got to celebrate it. Um, Cool. Well, I want to say thank you for writing a book. I want to say thank you for living out the book. That's even more important. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Dan. And uh, love you guys being with us as a church. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure there'll be people listening to this that don't come to Link, uh, that it blesses too. Great. So thanks for having a big life. Great to be thanks here. Thanks for serving us in that way. And we thank cannot you. wait for Strength Based Marriage Thursday. It's going to be awesome.